right, time for another update. This is my June 28th update. I've been working on the wings. Well, actually mainly the right wing. Trying to get everything sorted. What goes where and what I mean by that is how do you locate the ailerons and flaps left and right, up and down, fore and aft, and get them just as perfect as you can possibly get them. And really just learning the process. And the only reason that I had any concern that things might be a little bit different is because I'm doing uh, Steve Henry's aileron mod which I love the ideal of it. Uh, what it does is it takes uh, what would normally be the bull nose, which I'll show you on the flap in a minute. It cuts it off, makes this a sharper point. And the ideal is, and this is perfectly lined up with the bottom, and of course the bull nose is not attached yet. They're drilled, but they just haven't been permanently attached, is when this is perfectly lined up with the bottom of the wing and you go to rotate the aircraft, once this actually gets down in the airflow, it, uh, the wind catches it and gives you a little boost, which makes your ailerons more responsive. The only thing that I found that's a little bit different, like I said, you can see right here with the bull nose on the flap versus the bull nose or the new sharp nose on the aileron, you've got a, a little bit tighter distance here. So when you go to rotate that, you have to just have to be mindful that you have enough clearance between this tip and the trailing edge of the wing. And so once you get everything set up, I got the distance located, the height where it matched the bottom of the wing perfectly. I used that to gauge exactly where I wanted to locate the flap in and out, up and down. And it turned out very, very close actually to the, what the manual has. They have you locate, put a one eighth inch spacer in between the bull nose of the flap and the trailing edge of the wing. And mine ended up being three sixteenths. So a sixteenth difference. So it was uh, negligible. One of the processes that I was really trying to figure out, uh, you know, laziness breeds efficiency. And what I mean by that is I was trying to figure out a quicker way to do these. Uh, what they have you do in the manual is drill them with a 330 seconds top and bottom and then chain drill or line drill down through there to make that hole. And you're trying the whole time to make sure that you don't get into this webbing and you have to be flush up against that webbing as you can because these, your hinge brackets, need to be sitting flat against that to be perfectly straight. And the appearance is really not that important in the end. This all gets back filled with high saw, comes out flush. You tape around, you tape around this and then uh, you high saw from the back. That ends up flushing that out and then it gets covered in fabric. So, you know, no harm, for, no foul as far as the appearance goes. But chain drilling all those would have taken quite a bit of time. So what I ended up doing, I even made a little mock-up for you guys, is you flip the wing upside right, um, pretend the spar is right here and use one of these oscillating saws with a bimetal bit. It worked really well. Uh, what you need to do is figure out about the height of what you want your slots, mark the inside where you can see it, and then you make your first cut. You always start your cut at the top of the cap strip that's on the lower side of the rib. Anyway, you just stick your saw in there and run it up that line. Once you actually start getting closer to the top here to keep from hitting the top cap, you just push it in a little bit deeper and you can get right up that line, no problem. And then to get the other side of the cut of the slot, I used a piece of 020, which worked, it worked out perfect. I tried a couple of different things and that's what worked out the best. I did clamp them in there. You probably wouldn't have to. And then, anyway, use that to make a the same cut for the opposite side. And then once I made both those cuts, I just took a small square file, cleaned up the bottom so it was nice, square, and even and then you used one of these tapered files the taper was really nice you wouldn't have to use a tapered file if you had one the right width but the taper was really nice because you could make sure you started in the center and you wouldn't walk left or right with your with your end so that worked out really well the other thing that uh, just by happenstance I was walking out O'Reilly's the other day and I happened to see this small 90 fits in your cordless and uses uh, any bit with a driver on the end. And uh, where this came in extremely handy, it's a nice small head, it's about three quarters of an inch. For you guys that haven't built, there's a lot of holes that are really tight in here. For you guys that have built these, you know exactly the holes I'm talking about. The holes that your these little nylon bushings end up going in and your cables for your ailerons and flaps run through them and it's really important to get those just as straight as you possibly can to you know reduce friction obviously and, and the nice thing about this is it's got this nice straight edge and then of course it was narrow so it was narrow enough for the tightest holes that i could just put it right on the spar and it just lined up and went right through them no problem and then on the ones that were a little bit further away you still had that head where you could make sure that you were straight just by referencing it to the spar. And the other thing that these worked really well on was drilling the holes for the hinge brackets. 
as you can see there's some tight spot up in there and, and this was able to reach them all no problem so when you're it made it life really easy the uh, other thing i want to show you guys is my hillbilly high saw gun i couldn't remember if I'd, I'd showed it before it's working out really well i just took an old cocking gun cut the top and the bottom bar off of it added a board to put the high saw on and just a little piece of angle aluminum on the top it works really good it's not really robust enough unfortunately to push the high saw through the mixing tip so i still do have to do the bag method but a couple squeezes and i've got everything i need in the bag and i can move out from there trying to think what else is to show you on the wings one of the questions or one of the things i was trying to work out was how much i could get away with as far as moving the ailerons left and right and it you know how you do that well, of course you know follow the manual uh, but it basically has you put these boards on the bottom well, which is, is the top side of the wing with the wing upside down uh, to support your, your ailerons and flaps. So you run several of those boards down through there. And then you put a quarter inch spacer in between the aileron and flap and clamp them together. That establishes your overall distance. And then you move it left and right until it's centered on the wing. And what I mean by centered on the wing is the same distance past your wing root and your wing tip. One of the reasons I was trying to figure out what I could get away with is because I want to put a wingtip fence on it. As you can see, your last hinge point is the webbing on your wingtip ring. So I knew it was going to hang over. I just didn't know how much it was going to hang over and what the best way was to do that. So what I'm going to end up doing to add my fence on the end is I'm going to, I've got some spar material. So I'm going to add just a little bit of length to each of the spars. I'll pipe some pieces on the inside. I would have really liked to get a hold of some of the I-beam that they use up inside, but couldn't get a hold of that. So I've got some other, other things that I'm possibly going to do. Most likely just some tubing that fits the inner diameter of that and just rivet it and high saw it. And then add another rib to it, flush it out with the, the aileron and then put a, a fence on it as well and get those lined out, but I still have to work that out. Did get all my bracing in. A shout out to Zach at Just Aircraft. Uh, he mentioned that if you don't add, well, it just makes your life a whole lot easier. Uh, so you've put all these nut plates in and you've mated your fuel tank cover to those holes. Well, you can get in a situation where when you're shrinking the fabric, uh, you are supported here. Uh, there's a bar that goes across the top that your false ribs sit on, but there's no real support here. And so if uh, when you're shrinking your fa fabric, it's possible for this to pull sideways and pull your holes out of alignment if you've already got them drilled. So you said this little bitty brace there. So thank you, Zach. Jack as well, obviously, I've, I've talked to him a lot. He's, he's helped me out a lot. And then, of course, uh, Steve Henry, Gary Winterton, uh, Will Hash, <laughs> Josh over PTRL. Quizzed a lot of people, and they've all been extremely helpful. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll get you another update next week. Thanks. Thanks.